Okay, when we talk about the esophageal resection, automatically we talk about uh, uh, major, major surgery or I would say supra major surgery. Uh, many surgeons are afraid to enter into this field of esophageal and upper GI surgery. Now, when we talk about the esophageal surgery, mostly now I would say the 70, 60 to 70 percent, we are talking about esophageal resection. So there are three main indication where we offer patient esophageal resection. If one is, of course, the cancer of esophagus. Second, esophageal strictures. Now, esophageal strictures can be due to simple uh, benign peptic strictures where all the endoscopic treatment has been failed. And another, another commonest thing in India is corrosive injury. And mostly that is due to suicidal tendencies where uh, people ingest the uh, alkali or acids uh, uh, available uh, in local mar market and then uh, come to us with esophageal perforation and sometimes stricture. In that case, we need to offer them the esophageal resection. So what are the type of the surgery? It's just uh, how we use the approach. One, we call it the transhiatal uh, surgery, where we enter the chest through the abdomen and resect the esophagus because it is said that the periesophageal area is relatively uh, avascular. So in that case, you can even do uh, the blind dissection. Uh, another is Ivor Lewis, in which just remove the lower part of the esophagus. Then three field where we open the abdomen, clear the abdominal part of the esophagus. Uh, we open the chest uh, and uh, clear the surrounding of the area as well as we open the neck where we do the final anastomosis after removing the esophagus. Of course, all three can be done either open or laparoscopic approach is a case to case basis. I will not go into detail of that because we, we want to focus more on the uh, complications uh, of uh, esophagic tummy. So, so now once we remove the esophagus, the commonest question to be asked is what we do next? We remove the part of the esophagus. Our aim is that patient should eat. So we need to join something. So what we do? Generally, the two commonest organ we mobilize through the chest into the neck and join in the neck uh, is either stomach or colon or large intestine. As you can see in the figure, uh, that uh, in that case, uh, esophagic tomy has been done and esophagus has been replaced by stomach. Now, the beauty of the stomach is it has uh, largely four blood type of blood supplies. And even we remove or ligate the three blood supplies, st stomach still remove, uh, remains uh, vascular. So in that case, stomach is an excellent entity to replace the esophagus. But in some cases, and uh, the case I am going to discuss, uh, both the cases involved the uh, colon transposition or colon pull up. Uh, in that case, when stomach is diseased, that can be due to either uh, peptic stricture or corrosive injury because corrosive injury causes both the esophageal as well as stomach injury. Or uh, in another word, we can say that the uh, upper gastrointestinal uh, injuries. In that case, we have to use the colon. Now, we need to cut the colon and mobilize the entire chest and take out the colon to the neck and then we attach there. So why we choose either stomach or colon because again the same reason both are very vascular organs and we can cut some blood supply to ligate and to mobilize them so that we can reach up to the neck and still they remain vascular. So you can see there is the uh, example of colonic pull up. We have ligated these blood vessels, cut the colon from here, mobilize the colon, then the, uh, attach the distal part of the colon. You can see the blood supply uh, we take along with the colon through the neck. Then the remaining part of the colon, the distal part, upper part is attached to the pharynx or sometimes uh, if upper part of the esophagus is the disease free, we uh, join the colon there. And the lower part is attached to the stomach. And then we have to join the remaining colon to the small intestine. Or sometimes we, if we cut from here and the part of the colon is remaining where we use the transverse colon here, uh, we can use the first part or ascending part of the colon, transverse colon or even descending colon. Any of the part can be used. The remaining, the what is remaining, we have to do either uh, iliocolic where we uh, join the small intestine with the colon or colocolic anastomosis, where we uh, join the large intestine with the large intestine. So now you can see that if possible, why we always prefer stomach because in the, when we take out the stomach, you can see 
uh, that we don't have to attach anything because we have just removed the part of the esophagus, pulled out the stomach and just joined the upper part of the esophagus with the stomach. Otherwise, all the gastrointestinal system remains the same. Here, when we do colon, we have to attach so many things. Disturb part of the colon to the stomach or intestine, depending on the whether stomach is diseased or not. Uh, third, uh, we have to uh, do the remaining ileocolic or colocolic anastomosis to restore the intestinal continuity. Uh, however, the uh, benefit of the colon is also there that in long term colon uh, serves as a better uh, conduit. We call it either stomach or colon, we call it a conduit because it's the artificial pouch that we are creating. Uh, then the stomach in uh, case of long term complication. But in the short term, uh, of course, uh, colonic pull-up remains the, uh, more difficult than the stomach pull-up surgery.